the things I like to do, I kind of do this for myself, I don't necessarily do it for everybody, unless they've uh, you know, got a lot of time to waste. Just, I really like the look of these old caps, and then today's modern caps are pretty small. They would fit inside there. All it is is a paper tube. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to warm the thing real carefully over the gas stove here. You know where your fire extinguishers are at, right? And you know, maybe it may be more appropriate to do this outside. And we're just gonna warm that baby up a little bit. And I've gotta now keep in mind that this can get pretty hot, so I've grabbed one in with the cutters there and I'm just slowly warming that up. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm kind of raking that wax off of there. Sometimes these things are just covered with wax and filled with wax. Sometimes their ends are actually filled with pitch, which is a wood product. It's probably from the good old pine tree. It's kind of a gummy, gluey. I just keep I'm just warming that up carefully. It's it's warm to the touch. And I'm just using this paper towel to wipe it now. What I've done here is I've gotten this thing pretty cleaned up. And it's plenty warm. And I'm going to warm the thing some more until I see these ends start to get a little soft. You'll see why in a minute. Sometimes when you do this, those, those, those cardboard tubes sweat a little bit more wax so be prepared to kind of wipe that down and it's still it's still sweating it now here okay the pitch is starting to soften in the ends see that big blob there and I'm going to wipe that off and be careful not to get that on you. That stuff is plenty hot, and if it's sticky as hell too. There's a blob of it right there. It's kind of like molten chocolate, and it's getting warm. So what I'm going to do here is I've got the thing pretty warm, and it's starting to bubble. And there we go. I just slid that right out of that tube. There you go. Just pulled that right out of there, and that you can see the pitch in the ends. Set the uh, cardboard tube off to the side here, and there's the the pitch on the ends. There's the cap in the middle. And be careful, that baby is still plenty hot. You can kind of see how it was hooked together on the end there. And I'm just going to set that over here. I've got a little piece of steel over here. I'm just going to set that on, let it cool. And believe it or not, that tube is still plenty warm. It's just a hollow tube. There's a little bit of pitch in there which you can break off with your fingers. Now, let's see here. So I'm going to take this cap and bend, bend the leads at a right angle. Now, this may have some drawbacks because of the, all the space I gained back, I'm going to lose. And I'm going to see if I can slip that in there. And you know what? I don't think that's going to fit. <laughs> nope, not today. Oh, well. Hmm. Well, there's a couple things I could do. I could deform the tube. Barely. Nope, it's just not. It's too big. I could uh, just not use it. I could save this for a rainy day. Or... This isn't focusing terribly well. Oh, I could find a, I uh, bet a, uh, a cap with a small, uh, smaller voltage rating would fit inside there. 
as you can see, that cap, once you clean the wax and stuff there, it's really kind of cool looking. It's really nice. I think I'm going to try and find a cap that's a little bit lower voltage. It won't hurt anything. And uh, see if I can find one and slip it in there. I'll be back. Well, look at what I found. A little digging around. If I really want to be cool and hip and kind of quite foolish, um, I can uh, replace it with some actual old capacitors. Doesn't solve my problem. They're the same size. Or, did a little bit more digging, here's a one that actually is 300, or uh, not 300, about 30 volts higher than the one I had. Right there, but it's way smaller. And it'll slide right inside that tube, it actually rattles around a little bit. <sighs> comes, now comes the pondery part, do I secure that or let it rattle around? If I refill that, you know, if I put that in there and seal the ends, um, it's a, you know, it's an acceptable repair, and I, you know, got that. But the problem is now when the next guy looks in there, he thinks this is an old cap. If I leave it on there, you know, and kind of if it fits in a tight place, it may stay in place kind of have that look and feel or this may just be a huge waste of time hmm. Hmm. just something fun um, let's zip over here and take a look at this yeah. so those uh, replacement caps can go back in this little container Oh, this new cap, boy, it's pretty small. And if I put that in there, you know what? This really, to be really honest, this isn't a, uh, I want to say, you know, it's not a great radio. It's, you know, it's an okay radio. And I don't think this is a, you know, probably a valuable family heirloom. To be really honest, I'll probably sell this uh, either online or, you know, at a flea market. So I'm not too worried about it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back in here just without that body. I'll save the body of that cap for a rainy day for some project. Uh, like maybe an old tube amp or something that might look cool. These, actually these old old new stock caps are probably worthless although if I was a mean person I'd I'd put them online and somebody that was a uh, thought they were repairing a guitar you know, would probably gobble them up I see a lot of old caps floating around online well let's see here so I don't see any reason we can't put that in the way we found it. Now I think what I might do... Again, these are all things that, you know, if you're doing this professionally, or it's a repair for somebody, you know, time is your enemy. You're, you know, just sitting here talking about this, I've wasted time. Um, and... Uh, you know, again, an acceptable repair might be just to cut some of these things loose. Well, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I might, I might investigate this cap a little bit more. This filter cap. And well, I think the first thing we can do here is I can 
shorten this lead up a little bit. I'm going to use this side, I'm going to put it in this way. I'm going to put it with the legend up to the top so that the next poor slob can read the damn thing. So I shorten that lead up by about half. And I'm going to put a little, little bend in it. And I'm just going to go ahead and just hook that back where it belongs. I don't know, since I wiggled that out of there, there's a little, a little hole there. And I just slid it back in the hole. I'm going to clip, just at least trim this cap down a little bit by about a third. And that's pretty tight there. I'm not going to, mm, I don't know, I'm not going to. I don't know. I'm not going to use the spaghetti. Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trim this lead up a little bit. And maybe a little bit more. Here we go. install it just so I don't lose my place here. Yeah. My needle nose to kind of form that back around there. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and solder that back in there. It's sorta of out of the way because I'm probably going to remove this other cap. Now what I've done was uh, also, I took the old cap's body and threw it, I've got a bag of parts I kind of keep, whenever I work on a radio I usually keep the parts, you know the old parts, and uh, I'm just going to solder that back together. Let me see here. Am I doing you any favors here? I always get all the trouble to videotape these things and then I don't put them in the shot. Maybe I'll just touch that. There we go. How's that look? Yeah, not bad. Yeah, that looks a little blobby there. What they've done there is they've used two, one of those leads on that tube is unused, so they've used it as a binding post. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch up this other side a little bit. It actually looks like it's not soldered. And for all intents and purposes, it isn't. There's some, uh, what's happened is there's some spaghetti tubing there and it's gotten in between that lead. So, let's see, that was on pin 5. We got here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, I need to fix that. That, that is one of the pins that actually is used. It's soldered, it, it's barely soldered. Yeah, I see what that is. That's. This lead is also a lead to the light bulb. Let's see if I can touch that up a little bit. It is not working out terribly well. There we go. There we go. One of the things you need to do too is if after you solder something and the parts start to cool, if you jiggle them around, you're going to get a, a, a bad joint. So try not to move them around. Okay. Okay. Well.
what I'm going to do here is this repair cap. This is a repair that would have been done, you know, back in a old radio shop. It's kind of an acceptable repair, but it isn't. Not in my book. What they've done here is the electrolytic that's mounted on the chassis here. This is kind of the bottom of it. They've paralleled up a repair aftermarket cap because this cap probably dried up. And uh, they just put it in parallel with it. It says 30 microfarad. And it's at the junction where it looks like there's a 2K, 2 ohm resistor and uh, maybe a 1000 ohm resistor. Okay. That is... Uh... So if you look on your schematic, it looks like it's over here. It's uh, C looks like 18 on the drawing. It's an 80 microfarad cap. But it's just funny because this cap is only you know, four over my mouth. No, it looks like 80. It might be 30. You know, we can look on the. Sometimes these are marked on the on the radio's chassis or, or the radio's um, or, you know original component. It's actually right in here. Well, it doesn't say. It says 22, 20, and 60. And I don't think this capacitor had three sections that I saw. If it did, it's buried under there. No. Huh. Well, that seems awful big. The radio seemed pretty quiet. This is 30. Mm-hmm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of carefully fold that away. Now this capacitor I replaced but didn't hook back up um, isn't needed in the circuit. It's just it's just it won't need it need it to run. I could tack it back on there. I'm trying to decide how best to dig that all out of there. Do I really want to dig it all out, or if I'm just going to sell it, does it really matter? These are all questions you need to ask. And the answer is no, it doesn't matter. But it, it annoys me. There, I dinked around long enough, the replacement cap actually broke off. Now there's a lot more room in there. We could do, we could plug that back in and see if How much the replacement cap actually fixed the thing. One thing you need to do too, just a little tip, is uh, keep track of your old leads. These things are like little needles, and if you let them float around, um, they can cause you trouble, especially if you do share a workspace with a, another area somebody walks in here barefoot which you know I never do I don't I very seldom go around barefoot um, you could step on something like that make your life unpleasant or it could be an interestingly annoying trip to the hospital so kind of keep track of your leads you know I've got a little actually I've got a whole a little tin bucket I throw in then get rid of all that stuff well, I think what we're going to do is, I've, I've knocked this this cap loose, which I think I've said a couple dozen times. And we'll just go ahead and plug this back in. Let's see, so the radio's off. And we'll just turn it on, kind of line it up here. We'll plug her into the old. Looks like we're powering up here.
know there's going to be a lot of crazy amateurs out there breaking up the storm. Don't be one of those idiots, all right? Take a jab, call a friend, be smart about it. Enjoy your St. Patty's Day, and then join me here today at 2. On the mighty 1290 If you're a conservative American over 50, then please listen to Okay, I'm not even sure why that cap's in there. It doesn't seem to do any good. So either that, either that replacement cap is dried up and no good, or somebody didn't know what the hell they were doing. Okay, let's find out. And we got a few leads hanging in space here, so be a little careful. This is a trick. Now, this might not work with some voltmeters. This works with the flute voltmeters. Now, if you set the ca the uh, the meter to AC, but you're testing DC, you can see the ripple on there, and that tells you how efficiently the capacitor is. So. Filtering the power supply. And if you look here, it's got uh, 2.6 volts of ripple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ground away from that repair cap. <laughs> and it actually went down. I don't know if that's right or not. It could very well be. What it could be is that that replacement cap could be leaking badly. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut the radio off and plug it. And the reason I'm doing that is to discharge that cap. I switched to DC here, and you can see it's down to about a bolt. Be a little careful with capacitors. Sometimes they can do what's called rebound. You can short them and discharge, and then they they can kind of uh, rebuild the uh, voltage in there. It doesn't sound right, but it does happen. See, that's uh, a little mysterious. Yeah, we can demonstrate it. Let's see here. Let me trade leads here. What do we got about? And I'm going to go ahead and short that and see it kind of creeping back. Now, that may be not such a big deal on a small capacitor like this, but on a big cap in a TV or some goofy power supply or something, if it's several thousand volts, it might be enough to uh, give you a crossed eye or say a bad word or put your elbow through the uh, drywall in the, behind the TV we're working on. Well... <clears throat> so, oh, let's see here. We need to so let me see if I can get this repair out of here. Hmm. Try to figure out how this is cobbled in there. Oh, it's just tapped on the top. Okay, so somebody didn't even bother to wrap it around there. Again, sort of an acceptable repair. I mean, this has been, you know, around for a long time. Solder's a lot stronger than people think. Oh, well, that explains a lot. Never mind. What the hell? I screwed up here. This cap is not across that junction of those two resistors. It it doubles. Okay, it doubles over and goes to the other cap, which was 20 microfarad, which was C. Looks like 15. So I screwed up there. No problem. Let's just do our test over again. The obvious, it obviously doesn't appear to make any. That's the reason it doesn't make any difference when I tested that. So let's try again. Okay, I used to look. Some days I'm not very good at looking. Let's see here. There's a nice ground. And so this cap goes. This cap's on the other side of that 1K resistor. So it looks like it has about it has about 108 volts on it. Let's 
see that. Okay. So we switch to AC, and it only has. Yeah, it only has. That's a weird repair. It has like two tenths of a volt. I don't know if you can see that or not. Not. It's upside down. I know. Uh, let's see here. Where's my ground at? It's right. Is that right? It doesn't look right. Better look again. Apparently, I'm having some issues today with my eyes. Yeah, see, now it went down to less than a tenth. Okay, so that cap does do something, but I don't know why it's in there. It's kind of a dumb repair. Okay, let me show you a little trick here. A uh, trick, little. Uh, okay, so we got that cap in line there. And it's at 120 volts, or 100, no, 107 volts. And what I've done is I've lifted the, uh, I've lifted the ground off of it so it's no longer charging in circuit. I'm going to go ahead and shut the radio off. If I left that in, it would still be, it would be discharging. But since I didn't hook it up, it's just slowly creeping down. So, I don't know. It's 10.30, 36. I'll tell you what, I'll shut you off here and come back when the cap gets discharged to a safe voltage.